Okay, so this is uh, just to recall what we have discussed in the last class. In the last class, we have discussed the idea of asymptote. What do we mean by asymptote of a curve? And then we have seen there are three types of asymptotes. One is horizontal, another is vertical, and the last one is inclined. So in order to get a graphical representation of asymptote, which, which we do, which we think that this is the, uh, a line which will go along with the curve, but they will not cross their path. They will not meet at any point. Apparently, it may look that they are actually converging to each other. That means they will be meeting at it at some point. But the thing that is, they will meet at the infinity. So in other words, the limit x goes to 0 for the vertical case, x goes to 0 from the left hand side and the right hand side. If you go, and then you will see that the limit will be infinity, plus minus infinity. If such event happens, then we call it a particular symptom. OK. And similarly, if we uh, allow x tends to infinity or plus minus infinity, actually plus minus infinity, then if we have a finite value for uh, y, because this is uh, the function is y equals to fx. So that means you will get y equals to some b, a limit of y, x goes to plus minus infinity. And that is uh, less than b, that is finite number. So that is why we have mentioned also that the distance between the origin and the asymptote will be finite. Finite means as long as it is it can be there also. Finite does not mean that it is very close to within the uh, neighborhood of zero. Finite means whatever is less than infinity is called finite. Now this is for your information. That uh, I would say or exam. Then we have defined the inclined or oblique asymptote. Not only this is vertical or horizontal, we may see some uh, straight line which are asymptote of a curve and which makes uh, theta angle, theta can be anything, to the x-axis. So for that, we will see a inclined straight line whose slope is a, and then we will write y equals to this is mx plus c type uh, straight line m is the slope of the car a straight line and our target is to find out the uh, coefficient the unknowns a and b a and b if we find these two limits by this uh, four uh, limits one two three four then we are uh, we can actually claim that uh, that y equals to Ax plus b is an uh, inclined asymptote. So that part we have discussed. Now there is another approach to find out the asymptote of a car, given car. So this is alternative method. Okay. If we can write y equals to fx, y equals to f of x as a polynomial of this form p time p a p of x and q of x and the degree of the polynomial is one unit greater than the degree of the polynomial q x that means for example this is x cube plus x square plus 
1 and it can be x square plus 1. So the, this is the meaning of the degree will be at least 1 higher of px, the degree of px will be higher. Now we can write, if we can write this uh, expression in terms of this form, okay, ax plus bx, ax plus b plus rx divided by qx, where rx, degree of rx is less than, is less than the degree of x in qx. So that means, degree of Rx is less than degree of degree of Qx. So for example, we can write uh, Ax plus some B plus some X plus 1 divided by X square plus 1. So this can be written as this form. Now if you take the limits as usual, x tends to infinity plus minus infinity, and this rx by qx. If this goes to 0 at x tends to plus minus infinity, then you call it a that uh, this line will be asymptote, okay? That is inclined asymptote. Now, for example, if you consider this is the case, this y equals to fx, f of x, which is written as p of x y q of x. So the degree of px is 2 and the degree of ux is 1. Okay. Now we can write it. If we can write it in this form, in fact, if you divide it by 3 by 2x, okay, if you take 2 outside, then 1 by 2 is here. Then x square by x, that is a 3, 3x square by x, so this is 3x, plus 1 is there, and 5 by x. Now, if you remember that degree of Rx, is less than degree of ux. So is it satisfied? Yes, because this is uh, the degree is zero here. This is a constant. Okay, so this is a constant polynomial. Uh, degree of rx is zero here, and degree of x is one here. So this is also satisfied here. And now, if you take x goes to plus minus infinity then we see that y is equals to this one, 3x plus 1 by 2. So this is one inclined asymptote. Okay. But remember, this factorization may not be possible, may not be easy task. Okay. This is a simple function. So that is why we can write it easily but we may have some difficult situations so that we will discuss uh, sometime later but before that we will see how to uh, yeah uh, remember the last problem that we have discussed earlier so if you can write so there is an alternative method so we have already seen that uh, y equals to ax plus b so that was x by 2 and minus 7 by 4. So that was our inclined asymptote. So if you do, we have seen in the last class how that problem was there. So this was our, some, somewhere here. That was x by 2 minus 7 by 4, that was our y. Now, in order to, uh, this is for your verification, that was uh, task 1. So this would be, I would write it verify. 
Now there is another topic which is very important. If we have parametric curve, okay. For example, x equals to r cos theta in a polar form. Polar form is also one kind of parametric form. So f of theta and then cos theta equals to okay, we call this total function as phi of theta. For polar form y equals to r sin theta. And we know that r is a function of theta. So if you substitute this f of theta and sin theta, so this is becoming totally a function of theta. Similarly here. Now what we do is we have to the process to find out the uh, horizontal, vertical, and inclined uh, asymptotes are actually similar. So we took, we have to take a fixed point T0. If phi of T0 is equal to plus minus infinity, then phi of, sorry, this is not phi, this is psi. Okay. See, this is a parametric form x equals to phi of t and y equals to psi. Okay. This is phi and this is actually psi. 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 Okay. Then the curve has a horizontal asymptote at y equals to c. So we take t equals to 0, some point, and then this is going to be, and also try to find out the value, oh, the uh, psi of t at equals to c, then the curve is going to y equals to c. So this is the functional value. Similarly, when phi of t equals to 0 equals to a, and psi of t becomes a plus minus infinity, then we have a vertical asymptote at x equal to j. So here the limit is important or the uh, functional value. You can say, say the psi of t, here phi of t. Now if both are in infinity, if both of them goes to infinity at this point t equals to 0, then we will have one inclined y equals to x plus b where these limits are found in this way. Okay. This is so far a more generalized case. We may have a polar coordinate, we may have some or spherical coordinate or so there are cylindrical coordinates also. In fact, you will learn this uh, spherical and cylindrical coordinate in the next semester. Okay. Now, if you look at one example, so this is a parametric form of the given curve. So the curve is this form. So it is making one loop at the point of zero. And we want to calculate. So here t0 is equal to 1, or not t0 equals to minus 1. So if you take that the right hand side limit and the left hand side limit, okay, then x of t, if you put here minus 1, Cube. So this is going to be minus one. So this becomes infinity. Okay. In fact, there will be no uh, horizontal 
or vertical asymptote for this case. As you can see, this is the, the case. If you look at uh, this curve, if you try to draw vertical lines, it is going to intersect the curve. Or if you uh, draw some horizontal line, it is going to intersect the curve. Here also, it is going to intersect the curve. So there will be no horizontal or vertical asymptote. The only possibility we have to check whether there is a, uh, inclined asymptote are there, there or not. So for that, what we have to check? We have to check these two limits. Uh, first of all, we have to check both should go to plus minus infinity. Phi of t and psi of t, both should go to minus, plus minus infinity. And then we have to find out the limits, the limit a and the limit b. So here we get, so this is again similar to y equals to ax plus b. Now we see that this x of t, this x of t goes to uh, minus infinity as we see that t goes to minus 1. This is also going to minus infinity. So this is, okay, so for this case, if you take the negative, in fact, uh, if you take plus is goes to plus minus infinity as uh, t goes to, for example, if you take minus 1, uh, the le left hand limit or uh, right hand limit. So here also, left hand limit or right hand limit. Okay. So the first condition is satisfied. Now we have to find out the value of A, that means M. So this was, we have to divide, remember? We have to divide psi of t by phi of t. So t goes to minus 1. If we divide it, then we'll, this will be uh, reversed. So from if we simplify it, so we get m equals to minus 1. Now once we have this minus 1, we will uh, impose this value here. So psi of t minus a times phi of t. So that is why this is our y of t, that is psi of t, then minus of minus 1. Here it is minus 1. So that is a minus of minus 1. So that becomes plus. And then we have this one into phi of t. And if we just simplify and calculate, so this value is going to be uh, a. So let us not write a here because already a is already given. So that is why we have to be careful. Hmm. Otherwise, if you write a here, then this a and that a will be actually confused. So that is why m x plus b. That is the best, I mean, better choice. So here we get this value. And that is why uh, y equals to m x plus b will be the inclined asymptote to the curve. So this is one representation of the uh, parametric equations. Now, uh, these problems, if you try to solve them, find the asymptotes of the curve. You cannot actually find you cannot write y equals to fx. When we cannot write them, because they are, then how to find the asymptote for these curves. Okay. Then uh, this horizontal or vertical or rather 
uh, inclined SS we have found. So for this type of uh, functions, we have to uh, gain some more knowledge actually. Okay, so the expression for when we have uh, the function having degree n f of x n, okay, algebraic equation, it has degree n. If you go back and check, so here it is, degree is 3. Okay, so this is algebraic equation. Okay. So for this type of functions, what we have to do? Okay, so this is the second kind, I think. Here x cube is there. Okay. The highest degree is due for x3. So if we have this function in this form, x to the power n into g of y, x to the power n minus 1, g1 of y, x to the power n minus 2, and then g2 of y, and so on. If we write them, then what we do? We will divide this xn to all the cases. So what we will get? g0 of y will be free. And this equation will be 1 by x, 1 by x square, and then 1 by xn. So of this form. Now, if you take x tends to infinity, then we will obtain. Okay, if you allow x tends to infinity, all these terms will be go to 0. And then g0 of 0 will be 0. Okay, only thing. So if g0 of y is a constant or a real roots do not exist to this equation, then there is no horizontal asymptote. But if the real roots are given by c1, c2, dot over cn, then the horizontal asymptote are y equals to c1. So what happened? This is going to be a function of y. So if we actually make them 0, so this is an algebraic equation. If you solve it, a polynomial in uh, y, then the roots of the polynomial are c1, c2, and cn, or cr. Okay. If some of them are repeated, then we'll have this equation. And this will be the horizontal asymptotes. Now, for vertical asymptote, we'll have the reverse case. So the function will be considered as a yn, y to the power n minus 1, y to the power n minus 2. And the coefficient will be considered as a gx, g1x, g0, uh, g2x, and so on. Now, again, similarly, if we divide by y to the power n, then this will be 1 by n. This is going to be 0 as y tends to infinity. So if you solve, ultimately, you will get this g0 of x equals to 0. Okay, g0 of x. This is a polynomial equation. If you solve it, then you may get x1, x2, and so on, values. So this d1, you may get d1, d2, and some dr. Because this is a, maybe this is a n degree, or we don't know how, what is the degree of this here. So that is why we are writing some r. Some of them may be repeated. So that is also considered. So in that case, we'll get the vertical asymptotes. Okay. So for inclined uh, asymptotes, what we have to do? So this is from this concept from this one. And uh, for inclined asymptote, what we have to do? Uh, we have to put the given equation in terms of this x to the power n times phi of n by y by x then x to the power n minus 1 phi of n 
phi n minus 1, then y by x, and so on. So if you do this, then you are getting one expression of this form. So y by x, we'll write m plus x. Then if you just simplify, in fact, these derivations are uh, not so complicated. These are just a simple substitution. So what we have to do is we need to understand the working formula, working rule. So put x equals to 1 here and y equals to m in the highest degree term. Thus you will get 1 phi of phi n of m. Now if you try to equate to 0 for solve for m, if you write it 0, find the values of m1 m2 okay, because this is going to be some m to the power n plus m to the power n minus 1 plus one. some constant equals to 0 and then you will get the values mn okay. once you get these values go to step 2 form that uh, phi n minus 2 m by putting this x equals to 1 and y equals to m in the n minus 1 at degree. Similarly, find the values of c1, c2, dot dot cn, okay, substituting these values. So we have to divide these functions. We have to find out c okay, of this form. And we will substitute the case. So these steps we will discuss with an example. Then only it will be clear to you. Okay. So interested students can go through this uh, derivation. Okay. If you are not interested, you can just follow the working rule. Okay. So let us discuss this problem step by step. So what is here given? What we have to do? Yeah, so here it is given already. So putting x equals to 1 and y equals to m, so what you get phi 3. So this is the maximum degree. So that is why you call it a phi 3 of m. You go back, then you get here. A is the highest degree, it's the highest degree term. So here we have highest degree is 3. So we call it a phi 3. So for phi 3, what we'll do is phi 3 of m is m cube. Then here, so the, the three degree terms we have to consider. The degree of here is combined degree is 0 plus 1, 0 plus 3 is 3. Here it is 1 plus 2, this is 3. Here also 2 plus 1, this is also 3 x3 is 3 but we will not consider about the uh, well, that will be considered later okay. so highest degree term we have to consider because uh, the nature of the curve uh, is actually determined by the highest degree of the um, given equation so for phi 3 let us calculate 
if you substitute here, so m cube minus 2 m square minus uh, 2 minus m plus 2. Okay, this is coming from m cube minus 2 times 1, then m square minus 1 square minus m into m, then this is 2 times 1 cube. This is one cube. So this is the actual reason why we are getting this. So if you just uh, make it zero, okay, in order to find the values of m, so we will get these values. Okay. This is an algebraic equation. We can find, we can factorize it, and then try to find out roots of this equation. So roots are m equals to one, m equals to minus one, and m equals to two. Now also we need to put x equals to 1 and y equals to m in the second degree terms. So for, what is the second degree terms here? This is y square, 3y square, then 7 in times xy and then 2 times x square is there. Okay, so that is why we are getting this one. So 3m square minus 7m plus 2. Okay. Now what we get? We need to calculate the value of c. And c is defined by minus of phi 2m by uh, phi 3 dash of m. So this is our uh, phi 3. If you uh, differentiate phi 3 of m, what you will get? 3m square minus 4m minus 1 plus 0. So let us not write 0. Okay. And then what we get here is 3m square minus 7m plus 2. So that is calculated by here. And the derivative of the is coming from here. Okay. Now C is actually equals to uh, the value of C will be one when we have m equals to one, two, because we have already calculated the values of f. Okay. So C is one. C is minus one when uh, m equals to one. C is minus two when m equals to minus one, and C is zero when m equals to two. Okay. Hence, we remember that. There will be y equals to mx plus c uh, will be the asymptote. Okay. So if you try to uh, compute y equals to mx plus c, so if you substitute these values, this one and this one, you will get y equals to 1 times this is x minus 1. Again, this, for these two values, you will get y equals to minus x minus 2. Finally, another asymptote will be there y equals to uh, c equals to 0. So 2x plus 0. Or only you can write 2x. So these are the three asymptotes so all are inclined asymptotes they are not vertical or horizontal so they are actually inclined asymptotes now if you go back and uh, check 
there is a remark an algebraic equation of degree n as maximum number of n asymptotes so here if you look, uh, look at this algebraic equation the maximum degree is 3 okay so it will have exactly 3 asymptotes sorry a maximum number of asymptotes is n not exactly it can have only one asymptote or sorry it can have a maximum of n asymptotes the question may be it may be uh, this may come to your mind that how many asymptotes uh, will be there for a given uh, car or a given function so if you look at the second here the highest degree is three okay so here also you will try to find out x equals to one y equals to m the third degree terms we will try to find out so here also we are getting one this is two and this is another three so three asymptotes we are getting so highest degree is three so there can be maximum three asymptotes similarly for this case so what will be the highest degree so this is x square plus x. so here also highest degree is three okay so for this case also we may get maximum of three in particular here we are getting three asymptotes so try to verify them verify these results okay now this is for your information oh it is out of syllabus okay now the question is can there be any asymptote which is not a straight line the answer will be yes so if you consider the function the y equals to fx function is given so this is the given curve okay so in this case what we are having one parabolic asymptote now look at the graph it is you may think that this is x equals to 0 y is a one asymptote but it is not because it is crossing the curve okay. but now if you just plot this red curve and zoom it then you will see that this is one parabolic asymptote no matter how long you go for example uh, y equals to 100 at the point 100 and if you zoom it then you will see that there is a difference so in uh, in formal language uh, not in a mathematical language <laughs> so asymptotes are like uh, base transfer based uh, what is it called bff uh, best friend forever uh, if you live for 100 years uh, if this person is living for 100 years then uh, the person will be uh, there for the other person for uh, forever as a friend in need and indeed no matter how but there will be always some gap they will not cross each other parts they will not cross the limits so you can explain this in this sense also that uh, if you try to remember this uh, the idea of asymptote you can also explain it in this way also